situation is, is that because I found myself slightly perturbed and slightly miffed, I find that I am the author of the world's first single authored Trump anthology, a collection of stories all about Trump. And it's this, and it's called When It Changed, the Feminist Science Fiction Justice League Quashes the Orange Outrage Pussy Grabber. <laughs> and, and I'm an academic, I'm a feminist science fiction scholar, and when academics <coughs> get in trouble, what they do is they write their way out of every problem. And I said, well, Trump is a problem, what can I do? I'm going to write. And the only thing I know how to write is science fiction, and in my, I spent a year writing 34 Trump science fiction humorous stories, and what I did is I threw everything at him, all of the science fiction tropes that I've been studying for my whole life. I threw mermaids at him, I threw the Wizard of Oz at him, I threw beanstalks at him, I had a feminist special forces agent from a feminist separatist planet, Myra from the planet menopause, I threw Myra from menopause at him, you don't want to, that's like the a fate worse than death, she's modeled after my mother Rosie, you don't want to know from this. <laughs> and it seemed to me that humor and science fiction is a great way to thwart the pussy grabber because what is he going to do? Is he going to say that it's fake? Is he going to say that science fiction is not true? Is he going to say that, I, um, that Myra from Men of Poise and her spaceship and the special forces agents, I made them up? What can he say about that? So I wrote all this, and that was in my humorous voice, but I'm really an academic. And I'm, the academ I'm, the, I'm a humanities academic, I'm an English professor. And like when I'm being a Jewish mother to my husband and I'm trying to diagnose him, he goes, leave me alone, stop Jewish mothering me, you're not that kind of doctor. But I, <laughs> I, am, the, I am the kind of doctor that can take the, the book When Trump Changed the Feminist Science Fiction Justice League Quashes the Orange Outrage Pussy Grabber and I can define it. And I looked at it and I said, what is this? What is it that I've wrought? And I decided that what I did was I invented a subgenre of science fiction called Trump punk. And there's cyberpunk, which is going into machines, and there's steampunk, and that's Victorian science fiction. And if I'm writing science fiction about Trump, that's Trump punk. That's, that's um, how I defined it. So I'm putting this morning my scholar hat on, this m on not, my, not my fiction hat. And what I'm going to do is present a paper about what Trump punk is. How do I define what it is that I created in my Trump fiction anthology? So this is my scholar voice, both my fiction voice and my scholar voice. It comes out with a Queen's accent no matter what I say. Um, <laughs> and, and the real title is Trump punk resists presidential bunk or obscuring or updating obscuring mirror shades with revelatory magnifying glasses enhances seeing the forces of normalcy. And I'm trying to, be, to, to counter normalizing Trump because I think he's not normal. And mirror shades is the, tr is the trope that Bruce Sterling used in the first cyberpunk anthology. He called it mirror shades. So I'm using his Bruce Sterling's image. I have defined feminist fabulation as feminist metafiction about patriarchal fictions which, reve which reveal patriarchal imperatives. In this vein, I propose Trump punk as a political metafiction, speculative fiction that resists normalizing Trump authored fictions involving alternative truths or more directly stated, lies. Bruce Sterling explains that mirror shades symbolizes cyberpunk, quoting, Ster quoting Sterling. Mirrored sunglasses have been a movement totem since the early days of 82. By hiding the eyes, mirror shades prevents the forces of normalcy from realizing that one is crazed and possibly dangerous. They are the symptom of the sun staring visionary, unquote. Trump punk requires a newly relevant totem to signify the need clearly to see 
that the crazed and dangerous President Trump stands outside the forces of normalcy. My purpose is to explain that Trump punk's hyperbolic response is resistance literature which assuages becoming desensitized to the American president's deviance. When Trump goes low, Trump punk goes satirical in a fantastic vein. Or, for example, when Trump says, lock her up in reference to Hillary Clinton, Trump punk's response is to relegate him to phantom zone incarceration. <laughs> Trump is an orange outrage reckless to the extent that he did not use protective sunglasses when directly staring at a solar eclipse. Trump punk also eschews sunglasses. Trump punk replaces mirror shades with magnifying glasses, which underscore that resistance to Trump necessitates vigil vigilant awareness that the daily Trump show barrage is aberrant and abnormal, not routine and mundane. This new symbol, which denotes enlargement, stands for more clearly seeing the mandated reader response interpretation <coughs> Fra Frank Brunei calls pretend. Bruni says, we are, we're supposed to pretend that Trump gives a fig about decorum. Above all, we're supposed to pretend that what he says today has any bearing on what he'll say tomorrow when what he said yesterday contradicted it. Our president lives in a world of sand and wind and make-believe, a shifting, swirling, fantastical contents. I'm not that good at pretend, unquote. We can't normalize Trump by complacently viewing him as a garden variety president. It is more appropriate to equate him with Stanislaus Lem's ever-changing Star Diaries protagonist, I. John Tishy. Trump's smoke and mirror reality television show, a shifting sand and wind phantasmagoria, is akin to Vonda McIntyre's speculative novelette titled Of Mist, Glass, Grass, and Sand. Trump punk resists becoming good at pretend. Charles M. Blow seems to point to magnifying glasses becoming mirror shades successor, a new signifier of textual resistance. Blow says, quote, Trump sees it, the world, as if in a house of mirrors, everything reflecting some distorted version of him. His reality always seems to return to a kind of delusional narcissism, unquote. Distorting magnifying glasses supersede mirror shades in that they enlarge the reflective, the reflected astigmatism Trump projects. Magnifying glasses effectively symbolize enlarging Trump's distorted narcissistic reflections to facilitate through their delusions. Magnifying glasses function as a preventative to becoming lost in the funhouse, John Barth's term, of Trump's enlarged house of mirrors self-obsessions. Trump punk then, turns Trump's distortions into even more magnified and exaggerated distortions, speculative fictions which encourage seeing his delusions more clearly as delusions. In this vein, Stephen Colbert's take on Trump's fantasy response to the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School mass shooting epitomizes Trump punk. Trump ludicrous, ludicrously presents himself as the death-defying hero, quote, Trump says, but I think I really believed I'd run in there to school, even though I didn't have a weapon, unquote. Colbert magnifies Trump's delusional distortion by recasting him as a speculative fiction protagonist to exaggerate it further. The comedian begins with the mundane, the regular temporality of the rising sun. Colbert says, quote, at this point, I go to bed every night believing there's nothing he, Trump, could say or do that could possibly surprise me. Then the sun comes up, <laughs> and it happened again today, unquote. Colbert's funnier than me. Um, then Colbert abruptly deviates from sunrise sunset predictability to go, on, to go in for the speculative fiction transformation kill. Colbert says, as long as you're living in a fantasy world, at least make it interesting. I would have run into the school and hit the shooter with my laser beam eyes and then use my mind like Neo in the Matrix and fly, to, and fly away to space. Mara Lago, space Lago, unquote. Colbert's monologue reclass, recasts Trump in terms of speculative fiction to shed light on his delusional narcissism. Refusing to play pretend along with Trump, 
Colbert uses speculative fiction to make the inanity of the president's hero story nonsense more visible, huger. In contrast to Trump's business as usual cowardice, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker ran into a, really ran into a fire to save people. A potential future President Booker could conceivably manifest the heroism Trump falsely ascribes to himself. Booker would not, however, use laser beams or become Neo. By exaggerating and magnifying Trump's distortions, Colbert resists it and hence relegates it to abnormal Neverland. Or in Colbert's words, quote, that's Trump's hero fantasy, really stupid. But he said it, and you can't say that he didn't say it, can you? So Trump got all kinds of fantasies about what he'd say in that school, unquote. It is necessary to portray Trump as a Trump punk speculative fiction character because in the age of alternative facts and fake news, it becomes possible to say that he didn't say it. Colbert's description of the sun is not science fictional, something that is fantastically off, such as the scenario Isaac Asimov describes in Nightfall. According to Colbert, the threat radiates from Trump, not from the comforting, predictable sun. His use of Trump punk lets the sun shine in to illuminate fact that is truth, justice, and the American way. Trump punk replaces becoming desensitized with clearly seeing that Trump is transforming America into absurdistan. This speculative fiction subgenre claims that those who oppose Trump are mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. Millions of mad as hell women responded to Trump's pussy grabbing by marching in pussy hats, turning themselves into literally, literal pussy galore. The ambulatory <laughs> knitted pink wave magnified Trump's toxic mis misogyny for all to say, see. Sterling describes a similar creative and enhanced view. Sterling says, quote, with this intensity of vision comes strong imaginative concentration, unquote. Or in other words, magnification of Trump's absurdity is Trump punk. Mad as hell ride, writers who won't take it anymore use strong imaginative concentration to create Trump punk's magnified visions. Howard Jacobson, for example, turned his strong imaginative concentration into the first novel about Trump, a satirical fantasy called Pussy, a Novel. J.F. Garrard and Jen Frankel include alternative historical science fiction in their anthology Trump, Utopia, or Dystropia. Trump punk is not flooding bookstores, however. Literary agent Johnny Geller explains that the commercial view among pub publishers seems to be that people are living Trumpism and haven't got the head and space for reading it. It's a lack of courage and imagination. In con counter to this, to this, BQ Press shows no such lack of courage and imagination. BQ Press is the nexus of Trump punk. BQ Press founder Bob Brown states that, quote, BQ Press was founded in the throes of desperation, as like so many Americans in 2016, I searched for an outlet for the anger and frustration that came from seeing the America I grew up in torn from my heart, unquote. In the BQ anthology, After the Orange, an alternative series, Brown gathers a cadre of speculative fiction writers who are angered and frustrated, that is to say, mad as hell. I have two minutes, and I'll close by saying, I am grateful that Brown has the courage to go against the grain of, of the publishing consensus Geller describes. BQ Press is the publisher of my own When Trump Changed the Feminist Science Fiction Justice League Quashes the Orange Outrage Pussy Grabber. My Trump Pug stories serve as an outlet for the anger and frustration I felt after seeing my place of origin, Forest Hills, Queens, located a stone's throw away from Trump's childhood home in Jamaica Estates, torn from my heart. I am ashamed that our misogynistic ab abomination president comes from Queens. In response, I have authored a satirical guide to the Trump Revenge Fantasy Gallery. I subject Trump to close encounters with feminist extraterrestrials, alternative Hillary winning, 
history, Godzilla-esque male metamorphosis lock up in the phantom zone, and that's on a good day. Thank you.